Welcome to ALS Today. This is Michelle Flum reporting. Today, we turn our attention to superoxide dismutase 1, SOD1, a key enzyme that helps keep our motor nerves healthy by detoxifying them. But at least some people with ALS, these proteins misfold, contributing to the disease. By unraveling these mechanisms, we may be able to understand how ALS spreads and design medicines that may slow or stop ALS in its tracks. Joining us to talk about SOD1 and ALS is neurologist Neil Cashman of the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. Thank you for joining us today, Neil. Thank you, Michelle. More than 20 years ago today, scientists discovered the first gene linked to ALS, SOD1. Can you tell us a little bit about this enzyme? Sure. So SOD1 is a free radical defense enzyme. It detoxifies a particularly dangerous free radical called superoxide. To do that, it must achieve a very high concentration in metabolically active cells, especially nerve cells. It constitutes about 1 or 2 percent of the entire protein content of motor neurons. SOD1 was found to be mutant in a particular type of familial inherited ALS. The first idea that came across was a loss of function, in other words, a loss of the important protective activity of the enzyme. But that was quickly disproven by the fact that many types of mutant sod also had normal function. In other words, they were able to detoxify superoxide. And as time goes on, it's become clear that mutant sod undergoes a gain of function which is associated with its ability to misfold and aggregate. So what you're saying is, is that something about SOD1, when it's altered, somehow by misfolding, it irritates motor neurons in a certain way, signaling a number of different changes in motor neurons that leads to ultimately degeneration and death of those neurons in people with ALS. Yes. So what we've learned over the years is that something about misfolding of SOD1 contributes to ALS. But according to results from your own lab, SOD may actually contribute in many ways to ALS. We have hypothesized that SOD1 may spread from cell to cell and region to region because of a prion-like process. Prions have the ability to trigger a domino chain-like effect of protein misfolding. There are several neurodegenerative diseases, including Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, in which prion-like protein misfolding propagation has been implicated. We had thought that ALS, because of its slow progression from region to region, could also be a prion disease. And we have worked for many years on being able to characterize SOD1 as one of those proteins. So we have published in TNAS that misfolded SOD1 can trigger the misfolding of wild-type natively folded SOD1. We've also recently published that this triggered misfolding can be propagated from molecule to molecule and from cell to cell. So we are proposing that SOD1 misfolding could be the pathologic process leading to spread of the disease. Driving the progression of the disease. Yes. ALS is odd clinically because it can start in almost any region of the central nervous system. But once it starts, it spreads in a systematic fashion from that site 
to involve all other motor sites of the nervous system. We have implicated the propagated misfolding of SOD1 as a possible cause of that spread and progression of the disease. So we know clinically ALS presents in a certain way, and you're saying that this could be explained by the spread of these proteins. Yes. And I think you're also saying that in, in ALS, a few molecules of SOD, misfolded SOD, because of this prion-like nature of these molecules could trigger the misfolding of more of that SOD and propagate throughout the central nervous system. Yes, that's correct. That's what we think. But it's important to remember that although ALS may borrow from the prion playbook, it is not a prion disease. That's an extremely important thing to underline. Prions are infectious. They can be transmitted from animal to animal, from animal to human, from human to human. But ALS, to our knowledge, is not transmissible. So we shouldn't be thinking of ALS as an infectious disease. There's a lot we can learn, however, from these prion diseases. And it can tell us a lot about mechanism of that spread and thereby we may be able to understand how we can stop the spread in ALS. If we can inhibit or even completely block this process, then we may be able to arrest the disease at an early phase. You introduced the first antibodies targeting misfolded SOD1 in hopes to do just that. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Sure. The idea is that if we are able to specifically target misfolded SOD1 and spare normally folded SOD1, then we would have a magic bullet to detoxify the toxic form of SOD1 while leaving the normal helpful form alone. We took extended meditation on the structure of SOD1 and hypothesized regions that might become exposed. One of those regions is the dimer interface. Some of the other regions are localized in loops that are less tightly structured than the, than the rest of the enzyme. So we went about raising antibodies, and we were able to validate four or five we studied the ability of these antibodies to neutralize the toxicity of misfolded SOD1. And most importantly, we studied these antibodies from the standpoint of stopping the cell-to-cell -cell spread of SOD1 misfolding. And so what you found when you took a look at that was that there were some of those antibodies that had the ability to stop that transmission between cells, suggesting that it may actually be helpful as a treatment. Yes, we developed a system in vitro in cell culture to characterize the cell-to-cell -cell spread of SOD1 misfolding, and we found that some of our antibodies are capable of blocking the cell-to-cell -cell spread of SOD1 misfolding. If SOD1 misfolding is at the core of ALS, at the pathogenic cause of ALS, then we have a potential to actually arrest the disease. Since you introduced these first antibodies targeting SOD1, many of them are now becoming available. Can you explain how these antibodies differ or what sets these antibodies apart? The distinction of all of these antibodies is, at this point, uncertain. Biogen is in the process of evaluating our original antibodies and antibodies from Jean-Pierre Julien and also from the Mass Bio company. 
and they are planning to select the best antibody for going forward into human trials. Independent of Biogen is the neuroimmune antibody, which has been licensed for development by ALS-TDI for clinical trials. So in the end, we will see. Many cases of familial ALS have been linked to SOD1, but even people with sporadic ALS may benefit from these potential medicines. Can you explain that? When these SOD1 misfolding specific antibodies became available in the scientific community, we have found that antibodies react to misfolded SOD1 in sporadic ALS as well as SOD1 familial ALS. So this is consistent with SOD1 misfolding being the final pathogenic event in the progression of ALS, but it's also consistent with SOD1 being a consequence of motor neuron cell death rather than a cause. We know for sure that SOD1 familial ALS is in fact caused by SOD1 misfolding, and an immunotherapy could be very valuable. We still don't know whether sporadic ALS would be treatable by immunotherapies against SOD1. This is our hope, and this is eventually what the clinical trials will answer. Many different strategies are now beginning to emerge to target misfolded SOD1 and ALS. Isis Pharmaceuticals, SOD1RX, targeting SOD1 with antisense. I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about why antibodies and whether or not, in your opinion, these other strategies could also be helpful. The key of all of the antibodies under development is that they specifically target misfolded SOD1 while sparing the normal functional SOD1. For antisense approaches, that is not true. It does not apply. It is possible that such an antisense approach could work to extinguish the cell-to-cell -cell progression of SOD1 misfolding, but this may come at the expense of having inadequate normal SOD1 present in the motor neurons. So this could potentially lead to another type of toxicity. And other small molecule-based strategies beginning to emerge as well. We and ALS-TDI and others have found that molecules that interact with tryptophan 32, the residue which we have determined to be critical in this propagated protein misfolding process are capable of slowing or perhaps even blocking the cell-to-cell -cell spread of SOD1. If it validated in an animal model, this is quite important because small molecules have the potential to penetrate inside cells and block the protein misfolding process at its start whereas antibodies are best suited to block the cell-to-cell -cell spread of protein misfolding. So this approach has promise and needs to be developed. At the end of the day, there's no way of saying which will be the best therapeutic. It's important to advance everything in parallel in our effort to arrest the disease. In closing then, what needs to happen to bring strategies such as these to the clinic? That's a very good question. There is big pharma buy-in or big biotech buy-in to the concept of antibody therapeutics for ALS. Iogen, neuroimmune, ALS TDI are all consuming resources to develop the antibodies. ISIS and other companies are developing antisense therapeutics, which are currently in clinical trials. There's also active preclinical work 
trying to identify a small molecule that can block the propagated misfolding of SOD1. All of this requires funding, it requires focus, but I, I think that the, the world is, in fact, ready for a systematic storming of SOD1 in familial and sporadic ALS. I hope to see that over the next two or three or five years. Absolutely. And for you, for working on this, these antibodies since 2004, 10 years ago, it must be really satisfying to see how much momentum has built under targeting SOD1 in this disease and to see where we are right now with so many options and so many strategies to hit that target in ALS. I can't say it any better. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to thank you, Neil, for joining us today and talking about your exciting discoveries. Thank you, Michelle. It's been a pleasure and an honor. For ALS Today, this is Michelle Flum reporting from Cambridge, Massachusetts.